The perfect mock draft for the San Francisco 49ers. It's time to talk about uh, that team out west that just can't get over the hump in the NFC. Obviously, they got the defending Super Bowl champions in their way, in their own division. What has Flo Stradamus cooked up here for you as uh, we roll on with our Chris Farley perfect mock drafts here in the sportsocracy? No first-round draft pick for San Francisco. First pick comes up at 61 overall in the second round. Logan Hall, edge rusher from Houston. To me, the, look, I, I talk about complimentary drafting a lot mm -hmm. uh i think this would be a nice piece with Javon kinlaw to not put as much on him two years into the league he's been pretty dreadful uh and adding somebody like logan hall that would take as much pressure off of him as he would initially because logan hall is a phenomenal pass rusher if he had been used appropriately he wouldn't be here because the natural in logan hall is so good you mix him with Eric Armstead. Now Javon Kinlaw becomes a sub defensive tackle, which I know that sounds like, oh, that's not a need. Yeah, it is because he has been absolutely fucking terrible. And so to get something out of him, I think that's how you do it. That would give you the longest defensive line in the history of creation. I don't think I've ever seen four in line defensive linemen that would be that big. Uh, and it would take a little pressure off the back half, generate a ton of pressure, uh, and that is, to me, would be the best, without making a deal, best pick to make with your first pick for San Francisco. Two picks in the third round for the 49ers. 93rd overall, Zion McCollum, cornerback out of Sam Houston State. I originally had him uh, in my last mock draft. I had him as the first pick for San Francisco, and basically was told, yep, yeah, that's too high uh, by people that, are, are very wise and, and and know these things very well mm -hmm. because he's still very raw he's a long corner this is kind of, him and Tariq Woolen are very similar to me but basically what I was told was yeah he's a step behind Tariq Woolen they look very similar uh and that the game is raw level of competition blah 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 the ball skills on this kid are incredible uh if you told me a second day pick turned into an all pro i would feel really sure it was either Tariq woolen or zion mccollum fits in the san francisco system very nicely makes up for some of the losses in the secondary probably a year away from being a starter starter but would see starter reps initially i have seen a lot of people say he is the best small school prospect in this draft do you agree with that trevor pinning is the best small school prospect in this draft troy anderson's probably two um and then it kind of depends on what you consider a small school. Like, is UTSA a small school? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, then he, the, Woolen would be three, Zion McCollum would be four. Okay. So he's at the top. Oh, regardless. very, very high. <laughs> regardless of how you look at it. Uh, at 105 overall in the third round, Percy Butler, safety from Louisiana. Very rangy safety, very athletic, ran nicely at the combine, which got a lot of people like me to revisit him and realize that a lot of the things that we said about him were because of how he was schemed, not because of the talent. Is he a little raw? He is. To me, he's a free safety in this league that can be very incredibly rangy, but he plays with his hair on fire, uh, which is something that I always really like in a free safety. The The problem with that hair on fire thing, and that's this is what I saw in the initial evaluation, was it puts him out of position. If you put him in a more regimented defense, which is what San Francisco has, where he has less free range, I think that could put him in a better position to succeed. He is going to be a hot commodity, and I would say this is probably the floor of how of where he could go. Fourth round, one thirty four overall, Cam Jurgens, save or excuse me, center out of Nebraska. This is a stereotypical zone running game kind of player initially would be a guard this would be the lake and tomlinson replacement uh and he could do that immediately ultimately would be the replacement to alex mack down the line it's going to be tough for them to fill the needs that they have on the offensive line cam jurgens is one of those do you have to overdraft him a little bit probably mm -hmm. but but this is a guy that comes in and starts right away and I, look i'm not going to say you're not going to miss a beat from lake and tomlinson he got a big money deal for a reason but this is a 
this is a nice band-aid that's a long-term fix how's this bend i haven't heard you say that in a while uh because it really <laughs> irks me uh, that's that's one of those lines that people use that's really irksome to me because that's it's kind of scheme reliant right the problem with him is he's just a little bit small and in some of the tape you can see that because the big 10 plays in a more aggressive downhill kind of running game scheme Mm -hmm. that the big 10 tends to be the big school division or big school conference that does more power running game and so there were times that that didn't necessarily show well because well how do you defend that you know great big hulking defensive lineman at times he struggled with that i think as a pulling guard in his own offense like this it, it kind of mitigates that the sportsocracy always comes to you from the ingles studio ingles supermarkets low prices love the savings and rolling on here with the uh chris farley perfect mock draft for the san francisco 49ers fifth round 172 overall reggie roberson he is a wide receiver at a smu this is a two-way idea he could be a Debo Samuel replacement, or he could be a nice complimentary piece to Debo because they kind of remind me of each other. Say he better not well, when you start getting get death get threats from the fan base, that's eh, not a good sign. Right, that's true. He kind of reminds me of Debo in that there are great plays, and you can no doubt see the after-the-catch athleticism with the ball in his hands. The problem is he doesn't run a high-level route tree, so you're going to have to generate touches. There's probably no team in – in the NFL that I like Reggie Roberson with better than San Francisco because I've already seen them develop a guy like this where the best thing he does is get out in space and just make people miss and be electric. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to man to manufacture the touches initially uh, and teach him to run an NFL route free. But if you're willing to be patient and bring him along, he could really pay dividends. Three six round picks for San Francisco. The first one belonged to the Denver Broncos at 187 overall. Rashad White, running back from Arizona State. And now Rashad White's been in a few of these uh perfect mock drafts. This is the best fit for him because I think he is an ideal zone running back. Basically, he's everything Trey Sermon wasn't. No. Sorry. Uh I I told you. It cuts deep. Depth depth piece replacement to Raheem Mostert and I think he can do that right off the jump uh really good really good receiving back is how I project him in the league uh and if you get him in his own scheme just that one cut put your foot in the dirt and then just be uh, an athlete Mm -hmm. I think he can do that immediately at 221 overall out of UCF defensive lineman uh Kalia Davis very raw uh, and when I say very raw, I mean one of the rawer players that could get drafted in this class. This is a sheer projection. And Central Florida, you got to be really careful because there have been a slew of players that, that played in defensive systems like this that you don't really understand how to play in the NFL game. But a lot of experience, he's played a lot of different places. I think he has to come into the league and you have to pick what he does. To me, he's an interior lineman. Uh, uh, Again, uh, now I'm – San Francisco loves having multiple pieces. That's the way this – and I always call it the Robert Sala defense, but uh, D'Amico Ryans, they do the same thing. I need multiple pieces that do the same thing, interchangeable, very athletic uh, for – very athletic for how big he is. The problem is he's barely played in the last two years. So two years ago, if he had stayed on the same trajectory, you would have never gotten him a 221. The fact he hasn't played a lot is the reason that he's here. Uh, and you're going to have to be patient, and there are injury issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at 221, it's a, a, a risk that I'm willing to take. The second of the back-to-back uh, compensatory picks here in the sixth round 222 overall jeremiah gemmel linebacker out of unc great leader the problem is that athletically it's just not there right height weight speed he's negative uh, you know that's and that's just how i feel about him is, is I, I wish i could take his brain and put it into the body of a much more athletic human uh but he does have a role i think he would be a special teams ace off the jump very smart player 
Uh, we are Carolina affiliates, and anybody around that program just waxes poetic about his ability in the locker room and, and just the guy that he is, the effort, the motor. But you do have to know that he's probably limited to a depth piece in the NFL solely because of physical limitations. And Mr. Irrelevant, the last pick of the draft, seventh round, 263rd overall. You got San Francisco taking Cameron Good, linebacker out of California. Uh, and I'm I'm going to level. This is one of those players that I did not have a draftable grade on. The 49ers are having a private workout with him. He had a ridiculous pro day. It's hyper athletic, but good God, is he raw? And when I, it, this says linebacker in San Francisco, he's just going to be a piece that you can move all over the place. 6'4, 240, uh, four, I think it's mid four or five speed. The only problem is he is way more athlete right now than he is anything else. Gets out of position a lot. Uh, you're going to have to find a way to use the athleticism and use it to get after quarterbacks, gets absolutely dumbfounded in coverage at times. Mm -hmm. When he drops into coverage, there are times that you go, did you even know what you were supposed to do right there? Did you just guess? Or uh, and, and there are some tackling issues. But this is the kind of raw player you take at the end of the draft and just go, all right, we'll teach you technique because I can't teach you to do the rest of that shit you already do. Right. All right, the perfect mock draft for the San Francisco 49ers. Let us know what you think of the picks in the comments uh if there's a player you want to know how they fit with san francisco if you have a mock draft of your own and you'd like to know how we feel about it put that in the comments questions anything like that we'll be doing mailbags leading up to the nfl draft on april 28th two three minutes per team per video uh and we'll try to get to as many of your questions as we can before the april 28th nfl 2022 nfl draft live from las vegas nevada i added an extra word in there and i didn't mean to uh all of the picks coming to you live from the ingles studio ingles supermarkets low prices love the savings i'm tank spencer he is jeremy green and we will see you next time <laughs>